Do you have a regional accent? Spoiler alert, you probably do. But will it, what will it do to your voiceover career is the big question. We're going to talk about that in just a few minutes. What's up? I'm Bill DeWeese, and welcome to my daily voiceover huddle. This is where we get together. I share some tips, tricks, strategies I've learned over these past going on 18 years, 10,000 plus recorded projects, and uh, just to help you help you turn voiceover from a dream and passion beyond a hobby into an actual career. That's what this channel is all about. Over 1,300 videos so far. That's what this video today is all about. So welcome. If you don't mind taking a second just to uh, share in the live uh, live chat, let me know where you're watching or listening from this morning. I'll do some. I'll do a roll call here momentarily. But right off the top, got to give you a reminder that this is it. This is your last chance to register for the live training event tonight. It happens at 8 Eastern, which will be 5 Pacific. I'll let you fill in the mountain and central times. But it's happening tonight. Kayla Brick is our instructor. She's an expert on teaching people how to use and make money on Upwork. And that's what tonight's class is all about. How to gain an unfair advantage as a voiceover talent make more money using Upwork as a marketing channel. So I want to strongly encourage you to go to the link in the description below and get signed up for that class. It's going to be really good. It's going to be a great one. So yesterday I received a message here on YouTube from Robin Montgomery. And she said, Bill, if you have a regional accent, should you try to speak without your accent or embrace it? And hope someone's looking for a sweet South Mississippi accent. Well, uh, the answer to that, Robin, is yes and yes. So let's let's start at the very beginning. Uh, we all grow up with a regional accent. It doesn't matter where you're born, what country you live in. You know, it's just part of being um, from a specific area. People, you know, we we tend to cluster and, and develop similar ways of speaking and and sounding and and regional accents are a big result of that. So. We all grow up with one. Most of us keep it to some degree throughout our life. I grew up in central Ohio, starting to lean down towards south central Ohio. And the accents get very, it's it's very interesting. Very, uh, I've always thought it was one of the least attractive of the accents that I've heard here in the U.S. Anyhow, it's a very, it's very nasally, very, very. And the further south you get, the nasally, the more nasally it becomes. But here's the, here's the thing. Okay. So we've all got it. So what do we do with it? That's the question. Now, when I was coming up and I remember in college and studying communications, the Holy grail was the general American accent, standard American, general American. So if we were wanting to get in broadcasting, the idea was that we needed to lose our local ness and develop the standard sound. So that, you know, if let's say I want to be a TV newscaster, And, you know, where I, you know, where I was from in Ohio, but I wanted to do it in, whether it was, let's say I wanted to do it in Mississippi or or Minnesota or California or Maine, I wouldn't stand out and sound like I was an outsider. That was kind of the thinking behind it. Things have changed. Um, It's broadcast media is really no longer the thing. Everything's becoming micro. And so targeting in terms of content, commercial content and otherwise, is becoming very localized, very targeted and localized. And so the value of a local accent has never been higher than it is now. And um, if you follow audition postings and voiceover, you see it all the time. There are people that are looking for very specific regional accents. I see it, you know, on, on a regular basis. So I always encourage my students to, number one, start by embracing what you got. It's all about your ability to communicate. Being a compelling uh, communicator trumps everything else. In other words, take somebody with a perfect general American accent, meaning accent less, basically, to somebody with a strong regional accent. And the person with a general accent is not a compelling communicator. But the person with the compelling accent is a compelling, or with the regional accent is a compelling communicator. Well, the person with the regional accent will win about every time. 
So just keep that in mind. That's not, it's not the primary determiner of whether you get hired or not. But I understand the, the concern. Will it disqualify you? So my advice is embrace what you've got because there is demand for everything. So, you know, don't, don't, don't leave your roots because you'll need that at some point. But at the same time, I think there's some utility in being able to develop a general accent, accent less. And because when you do that, it does allow you to compete on, uh, in the broader pool of voiceover a little more effectively. But again, that's not the main, the main thing is your ability to, if you're, if you're a compelling communicator, again, that trumps everything else. Um, but being able to, uh, to call upon a very general accent when needed is very helpful. And here's just a little tip to keep in mind. Accents come from vowels. They don't come from consonants, at least not that I'm aware of. Uh, generally come from vowels, the A E I O U. And so the, what distinguishes one accent from another is the way that those are pronounced. Like for instance, the short A in, um, here in the, the Midwest Chicago area, instead of saying, ah, they say, eh, eh, as opposed to ah. So when you get the ah, eh, eh, ah, ah, that's where, it, that's where it comes in. And so if you want to help to neutralize that a little more, practice the ah, eh, eh, ah, ah, in a very neutral way. And because again, that, that's what distinguishes the accents. And if you can do that, then you'll be able to more easily um, be able to, to call upon the neutral version of your accent um, whenever you're doing voiceover auditions and you feel it's appropriate to do that. But don't, but don't obsess about it because, again, communication is the key. Being compelling is the key. This is secondary and tertiary. Um, but it's really an interesting time because, again, there is demand for all kinds of voices all kinds. Whereas it was, it was, it was very homogenous. You, know, you go back 30, 40 years ago and everybody wanted guys with this big, deep, low voice. It's so funny. And then now, you know, nowadays it's a whole new ball game. So don't let that be what scares you from uh, pursuing voiceover as a career. Day two caffeine. Last night I got, I started to develop this headache around dinner time. I thought, man, I, why do I have this headache? And then it dawned on me. Oh yeah, I didn't have any caffeine today. So we're dealing with that. Feeling okay this morning though. So it's, <laughs> it's all good. So uh, are you guys signed up yet? Did you go while I, was, while I was rambling on there? Did you go down to the description, click the link, get signed up for tonight's class? How many of you guys are going to be in tonight's class? I want to know. I want to know. I want to see you there. So uh, Bob, first in this morning from Reedsville, North Carolina. What's up, Bob? Man, you, I mean, you are like, Bob's here like every day. And a number of you guys are. And I noticed that, by the way, and I appreciate that. Rusty, what's up there in the UP of Michigan? Corey in Whitehall, Wisconsin. Uh, Ron in Charleston, South Carolina. Mike, good morning and looking forward to the Upwork class tonight. Yes, yes, Mike, looking forward to see you there. And Mark in Wilmington, North Carolina. We've got JW in Indianapolis. Andrew in Calgary. And GS, good morning. Sandra in Dallas, Fort Worth. Denise in Long Island. Dale in Atlanta. John Rhinebeck, New York. Mike in Spanish Fort, Alabama. Marla, what's up? In sunny central Texas. Melissa in San Diego. Mark in Colorado. Greg in North Carolina. Looking forward to tonight. Uh, let's see here. Dennis, good morning to you in Pasadena, California. It's a very early good morning to you. What, like 6.39? At least for me, that's early. I, I don't consider myself an early riser. You know, it's funny. I worked in morning radio for decades, uh, like 24 years. And um, I enjoy and I enjoyed it, you know. But man, I, I never got used, never got used to getting up early. Never got used to going to bed early. That's just, I'm just not wired that way. Amisha, South Carolina, how are you doing? Mike, what's up in Matawan, New Jersey? Jacqueline in Owasa, Oklahoma. Theo says, greetings to all from the speedy elevator, zipping me up to the 22nd floor in downtown Chicago. Well, Theo, I hope it's a good day in downtown today. Uh, Jason, good morning, Kearney, Nebraska. Excited to be a part of the morning huddle and to take the upper class tonight. Jason, excited for you to be here and excited about tonight. Marlene, good morning. Tim in central Pennsylvania. Sandra from Old Worthington, Ohio. Thanks to you. 
I can do punch INS. Oh, punch insert editing. <laughs> Sandra, way to go. Uh, Amanda, hello to you in Westchester, Pennsylvania. Stomach bug over. Yes, time to move on. Man, there is nothing worse than that. Speaking of which, we are under right now where I live, we're under like a, a boil water order where because of all of the precipitation, all of the snow that piled up in the rain and with it melting so quickly, it's overwhelmed our water system so that the water sanitation companies or department can't keep up with it. And uh, I've cheated a few. We, everybody, there was, you know, everybody went out and bought all the bottled water, so it was gone by the time we got out there, of course. And so there's a few times where, and we our bottled water, we're down to one bottle right now. And so there have been a few times I just needed a quick little sip of water, and I took it. So point being, I hope it doesn't turn into a stomach thing, Amanda. Well, so far, so good, though. Anthony in Phoenix. I wish there was a demand for a transatlantic accent. It's so fun to talk that way. Anthony, there is. I, I occasionally will, uh, will see auditions specifically for a transatlantic accent. It's kind of that not really English, not really U.S. It's, you think, the, think a lot of the old-time um, American movie actors. You know, go back and like watch from the, you know, the 30s and 40s, 50s, very transatlantic. Yes, 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 yes. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting. And it's uh, ruled me out of auditioning for a number of jobs over the years. Bill in Idaho, John with a 100% neutral accent. Way to go, John. Amy in Altoona. Tess, good morning. In Georgia, David. Good morning from Kansas. And we've got uh, Miss Johnny in Houston, Texas. Terry in Falston, Maryland. Um, let's see here. I know friends who do bl- who do blend shapes in Blender and have to learn that. It helps a lot for both observing voice and working on it. JW says, I just said I oh, okay, got it. Rob, greetings to you in El Central California. How's it going in California? Winter training with the Blue Angels. Briefing just about to start. Uh, Rob is a, uh, he's an air show announcer. Fantastic. And an honorary Blue Angel. You have a great day too, Rob. Have fun. Dave, good morning from sunny Lee Summit, Missouri. Larry in Atlanta, Georgia. Wally, hello to you in Annapolis, Maryland. Um, Rowan just bought my book. Thank you for that. And by the way, for those of you guys who don't have my, my newest book, uh, there's a link below to that in the description if you're interested. Uh, let's see. We've got Charles. Hello to you. Sandra, hello to you in London, Ontario. Can't wait for the Upwork class tonight. Need to get back in the game. Well, guys, thanks for being here. Uh, remember, if, you're not, if you don't speak a general dialect, whatever country you live in, doesn't rule you out. Doesn't rule you out. And if, uh, and when you want to, if you want to begin to learn to neutralize it, just so you have that, that range, think vowels, that's, that's where the action's at. And that's where you can make those changes. All right, guys, have a great day. We'll see you tonight. The unfair advantage of voiceover talent, learning how to utilize and leverage Upwork to make more money. Uh, the link is below in the description. Hope to see you there.